Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, brothers and sisters, I consider y'all family, and I thank y'all for hanging out, for being a part of our little reading, and it is a, um, I guess it's evident that the world is very clearly choosing the path of Hasatan over the path of Yahuwah. And it's good when we can find believers and people who believe the same thing. But it's very hard to find those in Torah who actually are close to the same thinking. Because there are so many different paths that people take and so many different things that they get hooked up into. And the one thing that we don't want to get hooked up into is we don't want to get hooked up into traditions of men. We don't want to inherit something that isn't in scriptures and consider it a truth that isn't a truth because at the end of days, I don't, thanks Optimus. <laughs> that is a little Bluetooth thing we have. At the end of days, I don't think ignorance is going to be bliss when we're standing in the fire. I believe that we all have an opportunity to seek our creator. And as we have read through the book of the Nazarene, it's very clear that our creator puts that little nagging feeling into all of us to come to him, to find the right way to seek the path of truth. And if we ignore this all our lives and we end up dying in complete iniquity and we die basically shunning the laws, statutes and commands of our creator by which very clearly our Messiah, Yahushua, there were no J's in Hebrew, but those who call him Jesus, he, he said, if you are in iniquity, if you live in iniquity, that you are going to be sent to hell. Matthew 7 says that if you want to follow up. But there's a many other places as well that talk about keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. And I'm an advocate for all of the Torah, the first five books of scriptures as a wondrous, adventurous, amazing thing. And when I say adventurous, it is an absolute adventure because all of us have grown up in a system in, in Babylon. A lot of us are from North America. That's where I came from. And we grew up with stuff. We, we, we grew up in a system where we put our hand over our heart and we pledge an allegiance uh, to a flag. We pledged our allegiance to things. We did things that we did not know that we were not supposed to do. And so when we come into Torah, when we come into the first five books of scriptures and we start to understand that not only is there a way forward and not only is there a kingdom to come, but there is a, a world beyond this where we get to exist with people who are law keepers, people that love the law, statutes and commandments. And the reason that is so good is because if you are a true Torah keeper, if you observe the laws, statutes and commandments of our creator, then first of all, you love his words. You love the first five books of scriptures. And inside of those, we know that we have love for our neighbors. We have love for, we have respect for our elders. We have all sorts of these different things inside of Torah that makes a community driven by Torah a very, very good community. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. When people say that the laws of our creator have been nailed to the cross, it's, it's blasphemy. One of the, one of the, it's, it's absolute blasphemy, one thing. It's, it's ridiculous when you actually look at it and, and people will say this without knowing what the laws are. Be fruitful and multiply. You want to put those laws on the cross? Should we just offer up our kids to Moloch and kill them off in abortions? Um, should we just sit around our house and, until we're all homeless and, and not be fruitful? What, what is, what is uh, you know, which are the right ones to put on the cross? And why would you take something that our designer, the one who figured out the entire concept of how to build a human in such a way that we can jump into a tub of water and our skin doesn't absorb the entire tub. You know, imagine this. Imagine how poorly designed we could be. Imagine if our, our noses were on our knees or better yet on a butt cheek. We have our nose right there. How are we going to do our business without sitting on our nose? 
There's a tremendous amount of beauty in the design, engineering, and concept of everything when it comes to a human. From the fingerprints, which are unique to every single person, to the our, our DNA that is completely different, to our, our souls, to the ability for me to talk as a human being to you guys from one individual to another, those are all amazing things. And when you look at the design and who could possibly come up with such an amazing engineering setup... Well, it's probably a really bad idea when you go against the scientist, engineer, creator's uh, book, right? We've been given a Kodesh book, and there is a, a programming that most of us come out of when we come out of a cult. And any religion that teaches you contrary to what the scriptures say, I would identify as a cult. And so it's time that we come out of that and we learn what our creator wants us to do, how he wants us to operate, how he wants us as a people to operate so that we can come together. We can come together and we're ready for this kingdom to come because darkness is, is across the nations. It's across the world. It's not just in the U.S. It's just not in Europe. It's just not in Australia. It is worldwide. It is, there's problems and there is darkness and people are actively seeking darkness versus going towards the light. So this is our opportunity, all of us, to be those people. Now, before I begin, guys, I want to talk about Yah scriptures real quick. And I want to talk about the blessings that I, I come out of the, the interviews and the things that I have been doing with the brothers on death row. And I've been writing, not just death row, I've been writing guys across the U.S. for a couple of years now. And it has been something that is a blessing. I, I, every single email that comes through, and, and sometimes... I will, I will admit, sometimes I, I'm a little ticked off. And sometimes, uh, you know, I work really, really hard to on a certain brother or we go somewhere. And, you know, I had a brother the other day. He goes, you know, I, I, I love talking to you, but, you know, this religious stuff, it's, it's, uh, it's white noise. It's static. He's like, everybody from all directions are sitting here trying to hammer in this way. And, you know, and, and I have to realize that he's, he's, he's not saying that what I am saying as a person is static, but that... The push forward, the way forward, that's what he doesn't know and they don't understand. And people don't understand for one simple reason. Nobody reads their scriptures, not a single person. Christians, 90, I would say what, 95, 96% of them. I mean, maybe, maybe even more, maybe 100%. Because if you truly read your scriptures to comprehend what it says... It says for all generations, over and over and over. There is no expiration date to the laws of our creator. It's just, we. it's part of our life. It's part of our kids' life. Their kids grow up in it. Torah is just a part of the world that we live. Now, Yah Scriptures, you can go to yahscriptures.com. This is what we're reading out of today. It has the Apocrypha. It's 103 books. It is a beautiful blue book. It is limited edition. Um, and I talked about this. I want to talk about it again because... It's it's a large, large book. Like this is a, a bulletproof for low caliber guns. And so when this is limited edition and it, the, the numbers are dwindling and people are, are definitely picking this up, but we're going to get a more portable version in. We're going to, the next version of this is going to be something that is, is much smaller, something that we can get. It's not going to be large print. It's not going to be for the reading marathons. It's going to be to get to as many people as possible throughout the world and so we have to get something small. And so maybe one day we'll come back to the big blue book like this, but it, this is a limited edition. So if you guys want this, grab these. And um, it's it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. It's yahscriptures.com. Free versions are all there as well. And the very last book of Yah Scriptures is this, um, which is the book of Khalidi. And this is the book of the Nazarene. And it's... Uh, Words that were written by a disciple, a Talmudim of our Messiah as he was walking amongst his people. And, you know, we know from other books that if all that was written and recorded about our Messiah could have been written and recorded, there'd be treasure troves of information. And I suppose we're, we're lucky in the sense that we have what we have, but I believe that we have been blessed by this book in particular because it, it gives us just a, a more better understanding of our leader who's coming. The leader who's coming 
is going to qualify the people he will lead based upon are we keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of his father. And it's it's the Revelation 14, 12 of those who will be saved. The saints are, are the ones who are keeping the commands of our creator and those who have the faith of our Messiah. Now, this is, um, again, this is chapter 11, verse 17, words of our Messiah. Messiah, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, says this. I have not come to point out the place where a treasure trove is hidden, but to tell of its existence. The search remains with you. Okay, let's take this one particular verse right here and let's, let's talk about this. What is the treasure trove? Guys, the treasure trove, I would say, I would argue the greatest treasure trove that we have ever had, that we've ever been given is the Torah. The first five books of scriptures, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Again, that is only a piece of the treasure trove because then we get all the rest of scriptures which back up the foundation of the first five books and then we get into the Apocrypha, which we're reading right now, and it concludes everything else that we have. So it's not an Old Testament, New Testament Apocrypha. It's the testament of the kingdom to come. This is the way forward from page one all the way to the very end. And that's what you will find. Inside of the Apocrypha, you will never find things that lead you astray. And I know there's a lot of contention about the Book of Jubilees. Um, there's also contention about the Book of Jasher. Um, we were led to install and make sure that they were all in there. Guys, we're here to read and to comprehend. And when you have the first five books of scriptures, and for those coming into Torah, for those who are just figuring this out, guys, make a bead with your scopes on the first five books and execute that. Read those first five books as a, as a beginning basis. Then start again. As you read through them, it will go fast. It's not, it's not a slow process because you will start to understand and you will start to get. And it's not a mathematical matrix of ciphers or codes. It, it is straightforward. Inside of the lineage of our cre creator's people, you will find when he walked with them, the instructions that he gave to them, which is great. Now, Messiah says, um, he's talking about this. Now, we could also say the treasure trove that is hidden is also the kingdom to come. We know there is a treasure trove um, because if we are able to make the kingdom, what, what, better, you know, what, what better reward could we ever possibly get is when we can protect our soul and guard our soul. Messiah continues on. And he goes, nevertheless, I give directions which, if followed, cannot fail to uncover it. For it is not written, if you desire wisdom as men desire gold and seek truth with the diligence men display when seeking treasure, you will not be denied knowledge of Elohim. Okay, what do we get from this? It's that there's the, the path forward, the, and, and this is what, it, when people find the Torah and their eyes are open and all of a sudden the, the shades come off, and it's like that old movie back in the days where they, the guy with the, the, uh, the glasses, they live guy, where he put the glasses on all around him, he could see the demons and, and all the world and all the programming that was all around, but when he took it off, it looked just normal. We need to look at our lives through the eyes of the lens of the Torah, that nothing can penetrate us if we are standing behind that rule set. That is the power of the Torah. So Messiah continues on. He says, lay up treasures in the storehouse of eternity and enjoy them forever. That is a, wow, that is an amazing thing of promise right there. This is why I'm seeking all you guys. This is why I'm finding those who are able to be listening. This is why I'm constantly fishing for men. This is the this is the mission of my family. This is why we're always putting out videos. This is why we're always, you know, we, we put out videos on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, uh, Telegram, and at some other places as well. But we, we try to do this because we want to seek every last facet of possibilities that we could ever do because Yah leads his people to and fro. And people are very, very thankful. And they shouldn't be thankful to me. They should be thankful to the creator of the universe who obviously sent them to some place that gave them the truth. And you have all these... Nobody knows what the truth is because nobody reads scriptures. Now, this is amazing that we are... 
laying up treasures in the storehouse. How can we lay up treasures in the storehouse? Let's talk about these things, right? The Christians will, you know, part of the cult doctrine is uh, works won't save you. Works, works are not salvation. That's a, the, you're not going to get saved by your works. And then you're like, well, how did Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob get saved then? Uh, well, well, it was absolutely by their works. And by our works, you will be able to be identified as Torah keepers or not. That is what we do, right? We are not the people. You're not going to find a Torah keeper eating fat and drinking blood and, and, and ripping people off. That's not what the children of the Most High do. So we need to show our faith by our works. And you will have anybody that comes from the, the programming of Christianity, they're crossing their eyes right now, and they, they, they just won't, they don't, it ticks them off, right? They, no, they're, nobody, everybody in Christianity just wants this, uh, it's easy to get saved, Jesus will save me, I can just uh, sin when I win, and I will ask Jesus to forgive me again. And so... It was, it was watered down. I lived that life 30 some years. I'm not talking as a, as, as a person who doesn't know Christianity. I know Christianity very, very well. So, and I realized that when I was in Christianity, I was not only not storing up treasures in the Shamaim, but I was also dooming other people in their souls, which I will be responsible for. Because all these people that left any time that I got them saved or I was saving the people just like my mom taught me to save and then taught them to save and there you know that's everybody the christians are out saving everybody that they they're they of themselves according to matthew 7 are all sent to hell <laughs> irony continuing on hoarded silver can buy only pleasure which quickly palls or things which endure a little while before falling apart or decaying only the treasures laid up in the shamayim will endure everlasting glory you know, this is one of these things. I have hopes. I, we're in Boss Clan. We are animal lovers. We love anything with fur. Um, you know, our creator is, you know, when we talk about the amazingness of our creator, as I am speaking to you today, I am, I have eyes on four pit bulls that just live right in front of me. And then if I turn to the right or left i have another two three so we have a total of nine pit bulls here and they 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 surround me they literally surround me whenever whenever i sit down they will they conglomerate right it is a game of twister even to stand up out of a chair because these things love human interaction they love being a part of a pack they our creator has designed just in dogs themselves such an amazing creature and I hope and I believe that part of those who serve our Creator will have all of our all of our pets restored to us in the kingdom. That all of these all of these amazing creatures, these dogs, these cows, these things that we all fall in love with, that all die and we end up broken and busted up, and they never you know the memories never leave us. I I hope and I believe, according to the apocrypha, that animals have souls. I did not believe that to begin with, but I do believe that, um, that there's there's something special. It might not be souls like humans have, but there's something that is very, very special about all of these things. And so all of these treasures that we have when we collect our gold and the silver and Bitcoin and hoard our cash and all this stuff, right? It's it's it never it, it's never gonna go with us. It means absolutely nothing. And the, if it's what we had our eyes on in this world, then it's we're probably not going to even make the kingdom, let alone having any kind of storage up there. And so let's get courageous in building the kingdom to come. And that's going to be by you guys out there, all of us shouting the kingdom, letting people know there is a way forward. There is a way. It's called the Torah. It's called our Messiah. It is a two-way street that absolutely you got to fulfill both roads. Lane has to be completely filled. It's not a one-way street. It's it, You can't have one without the other. You could, you could have the Torah without our Messiah, but because our Messiah came and the fulfillness of all prophecy, it's a two-way street. We need both. And there's nobody more qualified than our Messiah to make this happen. So let's continue on. Ooh, we're actually going to make it out of this chapter today. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're almost there. Doing good. All right, 19. Keep these things always in mind. For if my words have fallen on barren ground, they are wasted. 
spread out your roots in the sustaining soil of the new light I bring you. Okay, uh, let, let me finish this and we'll, we'll go on. This is, this is so profound. And when the plant of faith grows, do not let it be smothered by worldly weeds. Maintain cheerfulness in your heart and its reflection will lighten your countenance. And smiling, you will be welcome wherever you go. Lots of stuff to say, right? This is, um, this is the journey of a lot of people is that they find the Torah, they find the Torah life, but then we have the weeds of the world. We have the kids that have to go to soccer on Saturday instead of worshiping our Elohim on the seventh day. These are all things that come and they will choke us out because the, the, everybody wants the kids to be happy. Everybody wants the kids to be, hold on. Sorry, y'all. So you have the weeds of the world and the weeds of the world are choking out all of these things that you are, that we are gaining. And that I see this in the prison world. I see this when we get to brothers, we minister to them and you know, you'll still see a lot of them that they'll eat pig, right? And there's always these big things inside of prisons, especially in the Torah groups where they see other brothers and they're eating pig. They don't take it easy. So some of these things, it happens to all of us, right? The world's the world is a very easy place to get lost in. It is some place that is completely corrupt. It is void of all holiness and kodesha. Nobody serves the Elohim of our Creator, which is why this is the way to go. This is the cool kid. This is not the cool kids club. It will be the cool kids club. Like this is going to be the elite kids club. This is going to be the place where everybody's going to want to be. But right now, it's not. It's one of these things that it, it's so easy just to live like the world, taste like the world, be like the world, and not give a rip what our creator has to say. It's so much easier just to say, eh, lies are on the cross. All food's been made clean. Jesus died to have uh, my swine cross my lips, right? That's the sickness of the world we live into, just at that particular point. Let's continue on. 20. Go your ways. But beware of those who speak fairly, but hold deceit in their hearts. Beware of hypocrites and deceivers. It is no sin to be blind, but to disguise the blindness and say, we see, follow us, is one of the greatest evils. This is hardcore stuff, right? There's a lot of stuff. And, you know, I know everybody out there teaches to what they believe and they all believe what it is. But it, there's a lot of deceivers out there. A lot of people that um, they have agendas, and there's the the agendas are are something that is is you know when we're seeking the words of our Creator, when we're seeking His ways, when we're seeking um, teaching and guiding, um, we cannot let the world into any of this stuff. And so, beware is what our Messiah is saying. He's saying this. He's been saying this for a very long time. He gives us a lot of good warnings in the book of Khalidi. Things that we can guide us and put our lives, uh, you know, with. So, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys very, very much for hanging out. Um, the jungles are starting to dry up a little bit, which is super good. We're able to uh, get around now. So everything is going good. Thanks to everybody who has been praying for us. Thanks to everybody who prays for us. If you guys need any kind of prayers or want on our prayer request list, just send us an email. Jboss, J-B-O-S-S, -S, at jasonboss.net. That's the best place to reach me these days. And um, much love. I hope you guys have a good day. I'm out.